Good morning. So today I'm just sipping my coffee in my crazy mug. So my mom bought me this crazy mug and she thought it was the funniest thing in the entire world. But she didn't, she bought everyone else mugs that said like, awesome, boss, good morning, gonna be a great day. And then she got me one, this one that says crazy. So I guess we know what that says about me. And speaking of my mom, today it's, I'm gonna do a special interview with her. I'm gonna talk about a special time in her life that we haven't gotten into yet. And it's gonna be a good video. Grizzly, you think you're going with us? I'm sorry, but you're not. Come on, come on, Grizzly. Hi there, welcome to Chloe Simone Says. So today I drove up to Sandpoint to come to our Sandpoint store. I put my baby in daycare for the first time. I'm really, I was sad about it. I was really sad. I wasn't okay. I was crying a lot. It's not okay. And my mom and I are here to talk about her life as an expat. As, as you know, my sister Lily, she is an expat in Thailand, but my mom, also known as Gigi, was an expat to the island of St. Barts in the French West Indies. Mom, what are you wearing today? I am wearing the cute little t-shirt that says, girls are whimsical. What's that say? Iridescent, Iridescent fairy, fairy beings. beings. I'm proud to be one. You're a little girl. <laughs> it's still cold in Idaho. <laughs> the worst teenage day that I ever had in my life is one of my teenagers went shopping and the police called and they said, we've picked up your daughter for mm, shoplifting. I won't say which one. And then an hour later, my other daughter says, oh, my stomach hurts. And my husband was out of town. And I said, well, it's just a stomach ache. Go to bed. I need to go to the hospital. I said, you don't have anything wrong with your stomach. Just go to bed. It's just a stomach ache. Oh, no, my stomach hurts. So I took her to the hospital and darn, she had a ruptured appendicitis and the other one was in going to jail and I thought I was going to pull my hair out. give this a lot of thought because I've never taken care of anything like this, but we want the fresh eggs. How are you going to feed these chickens? You first. Okay, we're going to come over here for what you all are doing, okay? All right, your eggs are so good. Now, I've never had chickens, but we want chickens for those eggs. She said the best thing is to have the coop near the garden out there because she oh, says wow. they'll fertilize it and they can't get out. Do they poop? Oh, yeah, but it's, it's good because you... Put it in the, who's going to clean stones? up the poop? Well, it'll rain off, maybe. No, it will not rain but off. She said, I, I don't know, but she says they go back in their house at night anyway, that they just home right back in there. Hmm. You have to ask her about the poopy situation. I will. <laughs> so what did she say? Why did she say about the garden? She said that would be a really good place to have the coop inside the garden or attached to the garden. She's going to feed these eggs when it's snowing and it's blizzarding outside. We have to make a little trail. You're gonna say you're gonna shovel? Well, I'm not gonna let the chickens like go be hungry. That's for sure. But we want these chickens in case we need the eggs. And we're having a toast because we're doing a little family celebration. And when Lily was little, she said, "Let's have a bread," because she didn't know toast. So she said, "Bread. Here, let's have a bread." <laughs> there you go. So one of the things that makes our store so unique is that we have our own line of handcrafted candles made right here in Idaho. And who makes all these candles? Who pours all of the wax? Who delicately infuses the candles with the organic scents? This lady. Hi. 
And I'm a perfectionist. Every top has to be perfectly smooth. So I hit it with the heat gun, making sure it's right. Mom, what inspired you to make your own candles? I love everything to smell good. I cannot stand stinky odors. And I thought, I can make candles. I can learn. So I started practicing about seven years ago. I make a perfect coconut wax organic candle. And they smell really good. What is this tool you're using? This is a heat gun. You cannot use a blow dryer. It blows too hard. And this is a very soft cycle and I like it absolutely perfect. So every single one of them, it has, even if it has the teeniest dent, I fix it with this. It's kind of a lot, but and there's a trick to circle around and around to make it each edge. Perfect. Is that not perfect? White, creamy, adhering to the sides, and when you burn it, it's beautiful. And I'm with my guest of honor, co-host today, <laughs> Gigi. And we're going to tell the story of Gigi's experience as an expat, her life of adventure, her... I do say adventure in French. Aventure, I don't know, that could be. And her just, her life as an expat on the island of St. Barts in the French West Indies. Okay, my experience as an expat, um, when I was in my early 30s, my ex-husband, God rest his soul, he's deceased now, um, we had this plan to move to St. Move to the Caribbean. We'd sold our business. We just wanted to do something different. So we made a plan to go to the Caribbean and live. I was six months pregnant with Chloe and we started out on the island of Nevis, but there'd been some crime issues in the Caribbean islands. So we chose to move to St. Bart's, which was known to have very low crime rate because when we were moving there, we knew I would probably stay there six months or so by myself with my mother-in-law, good old Dorothy, and my daughters, and have the baby there. And also St. Bart's had a good hospital. So that's what we did. So how did you hear about St. Bart's? Probably from travel magazines. And you were just attracted to like the tropical, the island life like Lily is yes, in Thailand. Yes, but I have a spirit of adventure and I love trying anything different and new and going to exotic places. So it appealed to me because I'd spent 15 years or so working really, really hard in our restaurant without much of a break. And I was really ready to take a break. So you had your restaurant in Annapolis, which is actually still there today. It is called Cafe Normandy and you sold. We sold our restaurant. The restaurant. Yep, we sold the restaurant and we had some money to make this move happen. And we were also renovating our home in um, outside of Annapolis. So we thought I would go to the Caribbean with the kids, have the baby. My husband was supposed to join me there for that. And he would stay in the Annapolis area for six months or so and finish our home and put it up for sale. We were living in on St. Bart's and money got kind of tight and he couldn't send the money he was supposed to send. So... Mom is very industrious and I got a job at a French hotel and it was a beautiful hotel called Hotel Guanahani and it was supposed to be no problem if you didn't speak French, you're going to be at the front desk so everybody speaks English and like okay I can do that job. So I took the job but I rapidly found that they did not speak English and I had to learn French on the job but I had a good ear. So very quickly I was learning, I was nervous because they would scream and yell at you, electricity ne marche pas. And I, I learned to say, excusez-moi, ne quittez pas, which means, excuse me, hold on. And I'd sweat, I, I'm so nervous because I can't understand what they're saying. And then I'd say, excusez-moi, est-ce que tu parles plus lentement pour moi? Je parle un petit peu français, je suis américaine. 
And then they would explain to me, and I'd say, Nikita Paul again, hold on. And I'd put the phone down, I'd sweat, sweat, sweat. And I would try to figure out what they were saying, which I did. And I actually learned to speak very good French from that job. And I really enjoyed that job. And how far along were you with me when you had to get this job? Oh, I'd already had you. You were oh, a baby. Okay. So I had Chloe on the island, and I didn't work for the first six months there because she, I was three you know, three months from having her, so I was six months pregnant. Then when she was about three or four months, I got this job, and Dorothy babysat the children so I could go to work. And the birth story of Chloe is really good. Do you want to hear it? Yes? Sure. Okay. Let's, let's hear so it. So we rented a Jeep, and the Jeep was a clutch, just a little Jeep. Not I can't believe you Jeep. did that. I could not even begin yeah. to, like, I could not. I well, did not know how to drive a clutch. I had to learn how to drive a clutch. Now, this was an island with very, very steep mountains. It's not super high mountains, but they were steep, straight up and straight down, straight up and straight down. So we rented a house on the far side of the island called Twani. And um, at about four o'clock in the afternoon, I thought, oh, I think my water broke and I'm gonna need to go to the hospital, but it wasn't time yet. So I waited, I had a few contractions and I waited. And you were all alone. I was by myself. I'm so sad. But I had my Dorothy, my sweet mother. Were you scared because you were all alone? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> I wasn't scared. I'd already had children, and I liked the doctor on St. Barch. It was very nice and at a modern hospital. Only had four rooms. Wait, at about 7 or 8 o'clock, I thought, I think I better go to the hospital. And I at night? A, at night. So it you drove been, at night? It might have been late. It was dark, late at night. Wow, and I gathered, so adventurous. So you drove yourself to the hospital? Yep. Uh, in the dark. In the dark, across with the island. Clutch, with a clutch. With a clutch. And all shift. the children with me and Dorothy. <laughs> And we all got in the car and off we drove. And it was hard because I was always afraid if I didn't get it in first gear, I was going to go backward because, you know, you got <clears throat> you gotta go like that because you got to go quick. So I was at a 30, 40 minute drive or so to the hospital. I can't remember, but it was not around the corner. So we drove from one end of the island to the other uh, late at night with the girls and Dorothy to check on me having the baby. And... Um, the doctor met us at the hospital and she checked me all out and she goes, well, your water broke, but you're not in labor yet. Let's just wait. I'm going to send you home and come back tomorrow. So I went, okay. I drove us home at three in the morning, went to bed and my water had broken, but the baby wasn't coming. So I went again the next day and she checked me out and she goes, well, you're not, you're not having, it's not yet. So we'll wait another day. So this went on for three days, every day, every <laughs> night I drove to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> with the clutch across the mountain islands. And on the third or fourth day, they said, you come in tonight and we'll deliver the baby in the morning. So I drove myself alone that night at about eight o'clock, left the kids and Dorothy at home. And it must've been really hot. Oh, it's it was hot. the middle of summer. It was hot. Because I'm born in June. I was born in June. It was very hot, but at night it's cool because the wind blows there all the time. So I drove myself to the hospital and I'd made arrangements for a friend to bring the Dorothy and the girls to see me. And I went into the um, delivery room. They induced labor and Chloe was born 30 minutes later. Just shot That's, right out like a cannon. It was, yeah, I, well, whatever. <laughs> Just had her right away. I had a really good doctor though. She was very nice. And in the hospital in St. Parts, you had a view of the sea. And after you have the baby, they bring you this basket with red wine and you had a steak with foie gras. And then you had fish and it was really nice. Actually, it wasn't, it was a great experience, but I, I did drive back and forth the whole time by myself with no help. Did you have a car seat? How did you bring the baby home? <laughs> I didn't have any car seats. You just put the baby in your hand. Dorothy held you. Wow. Grandma held her and we came home. Wow. You are an adventurous lady. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I would be so scared. Well, if that was my third. It had been my first. I wouldn't have done it. My second, I might not have done it. But I'd had two relatively normal births, so it wasn't bad, and I just did it. I don't know. It wasn't bad. But St. Bart's is not the type of island you can get a lot of help on, so I didn't really have a lot of help. It was just Dorothy and I taking care of all the kids and the baby. Did you take us to the beach? Dorothy took you to the beach more than me. I don't. Here I live on a tropical island, but I don't really like the sun a whole lot. I get burnt, so I didn't. Didn't you used to dig a hole in the sand and put your belly I in did, it? I did. I did that. I did. But I enjoyed my time there because I had my girls with me, and Dorothy was such a wonderful help to me and such a nice lady. 
she passed away during COVID, so we were sad about that, but she stayed with us a long time. When did you leave St. Bart's? Um, maybe it was 18 months. We were there 18 months to two years, I think under two years. Were you sad when you had to leave? No, I was ready to come home to Maryland. I was happy to come home to my house. We didn't have it sold and wasn't finished, but it was still good to come home. But I, I really like, I met very nice friends there. I'm still friends with some people on St. Bart's. If she ever watches this, I was friends with a very nice lady, Anne Lespinas. She was my age and her sweet mother. So I can't remember her name right now, but it'll come to me. Do you remember anything else about St. Bart's? What's it's, your best memory of the of living in St. Bart's besides the birth of me, which is obviously the um, best? <laughs> We had very nice friends. And when you live on an island as an expat, if that's what you call it, you meet and have good, close friendships. And so you meet really nice people. We had nice friends there. Just like Lily has nice friends on Kosimui, like we're good friends with Sonia. Hey, Sonia, if you watch this. What did you not like about living in St. Barthes? It's very expensive. So we were always watching our money and food was outrageously expensive. We couldn't go out a whole lot and we kind of enjoyed going out, but we would go eat at the Cheeseburger in Paradise bar in downtown Gustavia, because that wasn't real expensive. They had great little bakeries on the side of the road. There was a bakery in the little village of Lorient, I think it was called, and just this little hut, I mean, a 10 by 10 foot hut and had great French bread. And we'd just pull in and for 50 cents, you'd get bread and go, and it was a different time. This was in 1989 and 90. You didn't need any papers to work there. They just hire you and pay you. There was no, there was nothing complicated back then. It was easy. You could get a bank account with no problem. Everything was easy. And they had really good food there. Good restaurants if you could afford to eat out. But the food must have been mostly imported. Almost everything was imported from France and then some American imports, but it was just expensive. They did not have a lot of natural gardening or natural fishing. A lot of the fishermen didn't fish anymore, uh, but some, so there were some fishermen, but it wasn't like some islands are abundant with produce, like Jamaica, St. Kitts and Nevis is great produce because they have rich soil. St. Bart's was very dry and rocky but have beautiful beaches. Kids, it was a good and a bad year for the children because they had a great experience going to the French school. And I know that Lily has some things that she will probably add to this, but in general, the experience was good. Um, they sometimes liked, I think sometimes Marcy might've liked it more than Lily, but in overall, I'm glad we did it and I'm glad they had that experience. What do you, what do you remember about Madame Gum? <laughs> Well, that was Lily's first grade teacher, and she did have a gum problem. She had to teeth away up and shut all her gums, and we would giggle. But anyway, and Lily learned a lot of French there. So when she went to high school and college in France, a lot of that French stuck with her, and she was able to relearn it pretty easily because she speaks French. And you still speak French. I do. In French. I love to speak French. In fact, that's going to be my goal. I'm going to be 65 this June. And I think by the time I'm 70, I want to be fluent in French. I have to study it every night, though. That brain's getting soft. No, it's not. You are as sharp as a pin threat. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Did you have fun in daycare? Yes. <laughs> Did you have fun at daycare? Yes, you did. <laughs>